acres, then you're no longer a snowbird? Yeah, because you pay taxes. Understood. Right? I got you. You're, you're a vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> back and forth. Yeah. The, 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 the snowbird, which ones? Oh, the snowbird. Uh-huh. You're six months a year. Got it. But but once you become a permanent resident, what what, what are you what are y'all well, called? Snowbird flies back and forth. Got it. Right. You make one place your permanent residence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then go up during the summer and come back down here during. The and summer. then eventually you make this your permanent. Cause I don't I don't really see too many people that do the snowbird thing end up retiring in in New York up there. They usually come down. They're already retired though. Uh -huh. Oh, a lot of yeah. You're right. A lot of them are. A lot of them are. So I appreciate y'all coming here. And, and by the way, just so you know, I don't know exactly where y'all homes are, but this building itself, I looked at the radar, we're not really gonna get any rain, no rain, right? But I don't know exactly where y'all live, but so it's kind of to the, the west of us, that storm system that's traveling, okay? All right. So, uh, give me one second. Let's see. Yeah, we're in the danger field. So here's a little something I just want to uh, do for y'all. Let me know if y'all recognize this person. Who is this? Nobody? Y'all don't know who Red Fox is? Of course. That's Red Fox. So you just, you don't want to, that's a young Red Fox. It's a child. Yeah, well, yeah, more like a light red. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? Let's yeah. see. How about this person? Yeah. All right, got it. What do you use? How did, how did he use the sign off? I forget. And that's the way it was. There you go. How about this guy? Barry. Oh, uh, Lou Reed? Nah, Barry White. Who is that? Barry White. Oh, Barry you White. just keep. Yeah, y'all don't remember this guy? All right. How about her? Jackie. Jack, Jackie O or Jackie or Jackie Kennedy? Kennedy. <laughs> you say Jackie, just Jackie. How about this guy? What's that? Yeah. How about this guy? Martin Luther King. Oh yeah, that was, it, it was resounding. Did you ever meet him? Uh, I oh no, I, man! I wish I had the opportunity. I, I mean, what did you walk with him at? Up in, uh, up in Montgomery. Oh man, I, I I would love to talk to you more about that experience. How about this guy? So which Michael y'all like? Which 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 shade of the? Which your yeah. brown light skin? <laughs> Young Michael, right? How about her? The queen of mean. Y'all remember her? Yeah. Nobody don't remember? Mm-hmm. The babe. Jimi Hendrix. Is that Jimi Hendrix? It, it, it was him, yes. <laughs> What's that? It's not raining, that's wind. <laughs> he said he tried to catch me. <laughs> oh. Don't look at this. Yeah. <laughs> what was it? Uh, I got you, babe. And that's why y'all here. Y'all trying to get make sure y'all take care. You know, I got you. How about her? Princess Die. I think they doing what? The coronation? Is uh, right? Do y'all? You're right. <laughs> Drizzle. I apologize. Hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> I apologize. You got better ears than me. How about her? Oh man, I've heard it's a, it's it's some books out, man. Did you see the movie, the remake they did? I did not. It's absolutely it's good. It's it's good. It's good. They did a perfect job. And and the actress, she, she seems like she took it seriously. Absolutely. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, I'm gonna check it out. Did they did they get into like the? They got into everything. Ah. It was, it was very well made and did an excellent job of representing. I'm gonna check it out. How about this? Sammy Davis, Sammy Davis Jr., very talented man. James Brown, the king of soul, I think that's what he called. Andy, is that Andy Garcia? Yeah. yeah, okay. How about him? When he died, he was the richest man in the world, I believe. Yeah. That was Oh, uh huh. So, so uh, of course, you know, all of these people are, as you can see, renowned, very well known. But what else do you think they had in common? Money. They had money, and they all died without an estate plan. All died without a trust. All died without a will. Oh, I didn't uh, know that. 
Yeah, and, and some of their estates are still being fought over. I think uh, Martin Luther King's 30-plus uh, years now still hasn't been closed, right? And the way they have it set up in a lot of states is, uh, I think it's, in Florida they have it capped to where if your family is, if they're transferring assets, it's 3% for every $100,000. So if your house is 300000 that's $9,000 in probate costs, right? And then it goes on and on from there, right? But that cap that they put on it is only if there's no contesting. Do any of you feel like one of your children, one of your siblings, one of your brothers, one of your sisters, parents, anything, might contest the will? Maybe, maybe not. All it takes is one person to contest, and then all of a sudden that 3% cap that's on it has been removed. All right. So that's the first thing that you should know about how it works. All right. So uh, just so you know, my name is Randolph Love III. Uh, protect your future and your family. That's, that's what I help people do. Uh, I am a registered instructor with the Florida Department of Financial Services. I help people with continuing education, also with pre-licensing. Uh, I also provide training and consulting to corporate, federal, state, and local government agencies. Uh, they pay me to do that, you know, but I do this right here for free. Uh, and I assist individuals and business owners with effective tax minimization and wealth strategies. And I typically use insurance vehicles like properly structured index universal life policies and annuities and things of that nature. All right. Uh, here's the team uh, that I work with. Uh, one of the things that you need to make sure whoever you choose to go with that helps you out with this sort of stuff, make sure it's not just a one man show. Right. What happens if they're not there when something happens? Like, who do, they, who, do you, who do you call? Who do your people call? Right. You want to have somebody that, all right, if I can't reach Randolph, I can reach Noel. I can reach Vic, uh, Scott. I can reach Lisa. I can reach Andrew. I can reach Sierra. You want somebody that has a team of people around them that can help you out. Okay. Here's my friend, Andrew Victor. Uh, he graduated from Harvard. He never says it because everybody says it for him, right? I think everybody should have at least one friend that graduated from Harvard, right? Uh, just so you know, uh, he graduated in 1993. He has 22 years of experience in financial services. And just so y'all know, the reason why I'm giving you this is I, I truly believe all truths are parallel. You want to know the source of the food that you got before you eat it. You want to know the source of the water that you're drinking before you're drinking. And you also want to know the source of the information that you're getting, all right? So Andrew Vitter graduated from Harvard, 22 years of experience in the financial services industry. Uh, also, he specializes in tax efficient income planning, wealth transfer, estate planning, and business succession. Uh, consults with risk and tax mitigation strategies with a focus on lifetime income. When I first started working with multimillionaire clients, I used to always call Andrew uh, because I wanted to make sure I was competent. I still call Andrew, right? But just so you know, it's one of those things to where the people who help you learn, you know, I keep them around, right? This is Sierra Lister. She's the attorney on the team, okay? Uh, she's the one that uh, you definitely want to make sure that there's an attorney involved when it comes to drafting your trust drafting your wills, when it comes to your medical power of attorneys, financial power of attorneys, when it comes to all of that stuff, you want to make sure to have an attorney involved. She got a full scholarship graduate from Ave Maria School of Law in Naples, Florida. All right. So she's a Floridian. All right. Also, uh, she focuses on estate planning to help people avoid the negative effects of probate. Uh, Sierra believes in the three key pillars, planning, preparation, and prevention. And this is probably one of the things I like most about Sierra. Uh, she helps raise funds to cover medical bills for dogs in animal shelters. All right? Who doesn't like dogs, right? And if she does that for dogs, imagine what she could do for you. All right, all right so let's get ready to learn. But before we learn, uh, let's, let's, let's talk about what we're going to talk about. What happens if there's no legacy plan in place? All right? Also, we're going to talk about seven everyday situations that can lead to an emotional and tragic results and how to prepare for them. OK, we're also going to talk about how to write the ultimate love note to your family. Uh, just it's not just about a will and a trust. Have you all ever heard of a legacy will? Basically, you you 
write, you have somebody ask you to write questions or it's listed on the paper, uh, why you do these things, why you don't do these things, uh, how did you meet this person, where did this come from? Uh, there was a, one story that I heard, and I don't know if y'all heard it either, but this one guy, uh, what they would do is they would cut the half of a turkey off and then put it in a pan and then they would cook it, cook it. And he would ask, well, why did you cut, why did you cut the bottom half of the turkey off before you put it in the pan? And she said, uh, that's just tradition, that's just what we do. And then the mother came over and he said, well, your, your daughter, she cuts the ha bottom half of the turkey off, then she puts it in the pan. Why do y'all cut the bottom of the turkey off and put it in the pan? That's just tradition, that's what we do. Just so happened that the grandmother was still alive and she said the reason why we do that is there was a time when we didn't have a big enough pot, so we had to cut it off. And then it, now it became a tradition. Nobody knows why they do it because it was never written down. Uh, you, you definitely want to work with somebody who doesn't just want to talk about the money, but somebody wants to talk about the legacy as well and help you document those things. Uh, what, what I like to do is uh, how, how many of y'all still have old VHSs and DVDs? Pictures, right? Uh, what it is, is did y'all know that there are companies that you send your VHS's DVDs to and they convert them to digital, right? So we work, we partner with those type of companies to where they'll convert your DVDs, your VHS's, your pictures to digital format and then they'll put it all inside of a, a, a digital platform for your, uh, for your people who are still here, right? Because what happens when we're in Florida. What happens when a fire happens? What happens when a tornado happens? What happens when a flood happens? Now those family albums are gone. But if you get them converted to digital, you can protect it. That's a risk management technique called duplica duplication. All right? And how to potentially lower or eliminate taxes on your Social Security benefits. Anybody in here playing taxes on their Social Security? Did you know that you're not supposed to? <coughs> If your money was situated correctly, your, your Social Security money should be coming in tax-free, right? You want to work with somebody who knows how to situate your Social Security to where it's coming in tax-free. All right. So as, as I, it seems like some of all of you, uh, some of you already done, please fill out your green sheet. sheet. And once again, uh, the sheet is just for me for just in case the tax man ever come knocking on my door and say, I, I know you don't teach this many people. I say, yes, I do. Right. I can show them that. Right. Uh, also, uh, if you need to take a call, please step outside. We understand that, uh, you know, people need you. So it's nothing wrong if you got a call and, and you know, you're very important, which I think some of you are, you know, you can just step out. All right. The restrooms, if you go straight down this hallway, straight down this hallway, those are the restrooms. It looks like, a, like, like you're walking into a kitchen, but then you'll see the bathroom areas, okay? And please write your questions uh, on the information. Uh, it looks like you also see that there's a place for you to write your questions. The reason why I'm asking y'all to write your questions, because if I get to answering questions, then I'm really going to have you here for a long time. And, and then, because I think that was that one, it was one little spot of rain. I, now, now I can truly say it's not going to happen, all right? All right, so, but, but I don't want to keep y'all here all night. Uh, now, I want to let y'all know this, and I, you know, nobody's going to judge you if you take up, take up on it, but uh, the, peop the people who own this building are very good friends of mine. They said if any of y'all wanted to partake of any of the bar, you're more than welcome, all right? I'm just, I'm just letting you know, all right? <laughs> so, you know, they got wine, they got beer, they got, you know, just letting you know. I know y'all trying to live a little longer. I got you. All right, so let's get it started, y'all. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they got a plastic cup, man. Nah, I got you, man. Hey, listen, I ain't going to judge you. Nobody ain't going to judge you. What's your name? What's your social? I'm just joking. <laughs> all right, y'all. Let's get it started. Uh, it, some of you probably heard this story before, and I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit, right? But meet Jed, all right? Jed has done very well for himself, all right? Uh, he's somebody that, uh, you know, he, as you can see, he earned his money from the land, all right? He, he, he did so well that this is his estate, all right? This is the house. This is the beach house. Look at the vegetation, right? You know somebody did good when they, they got so much greenage that they making mazes out of it. That's Jed, right? Jed is single. Anybody want to get introduced to Jed? 
I got you. All right. <laughs> hey, you. Hey, you say as long as hey, as long as the check clears, right? <laughs> and and this is Jed's farm, right? Jed doesn't have nobody but his daughter Ellie May, right? So when Jed dies, every oh you say oh not no more, right? When Jed dies, everything is set to go to Ellie May, right? And not that Ellie Mae can't handle it. Like, I work with a lot of attorneys. The best attorneys that I work with are the women, right? They're very meticulous, very organized, and they, they like to dot their I's, cross their T's. So not that Ellie Mae can't handle it, but he's about to pass down this estate, all of this money, all of this money. He said, man, I, I need to do something to help Ellie Mae out, right? So what did Jed do? He sent out, uh, he did a Facebook ad and sent mailers to people's house, all right? He said, hey, I want y'all to come to my house, all the people in the town. He, he invited all the eligible bachelors in the town to come to the house to have a good time. He said, just come out, have a good time, right? So that's them having a good time, drinking, right? I think they, they got a little bit of some of the stuff from the bar, right? So when the night was getting about over, he took all the eligible bachelors to the backyard, and he said, now I'm going to tell you the reason why I really invited you here, right? My daughter, Ellie Mae, is single, and I'm looking for an eligible bachelor to marry her, right? And he says, now, here's the competition. Here's the, here's the rub, right? In order for you to have my daughter's hand in marriage, you have to be able to swim from one side of this pool to the other. Now, keep in mind... There are crocodiles in this pool, right? Anybody know the difference between a crocodile and an alligator? There you go. Crocodile got the, uh, got the, sh the sharp point. The, the alligator got the wide mouth. And the way I rem I, I, I got so many alligator, all right, crocodile. A alligator seems like a longer word to me, so that's how I remember the difference. So if anybody, y'all can leave now if you just came here to figure out the difference between a crocodile and an alligator, okay? But he says, hey, if you can swim to the other side of this pool, you can have my daughter's hand in marriage. He said, now keep in mind, there's, allig there's crocodiles in this pool. There's snakes in this pool. There are piranha in this pool. If you can get to the other side of this pool, you can get one of three things, all right? One, I'll give you a million dollars. The other, I'll give you all of my land and all of my estates. And the other, I'll give you Ella May's hand in marriage. Now, keep in mind, if you get uh, Ella May's hand in marriage, you get everything, right? And as soon as he could get the words out of his mouth, he hears a splash in the pool, <laughs> right? And in six seconds flat, guess who emerges from the pool? Bob, right? And he said, oh, man, how did, how did you do that? I mean, that, that's amazing, right? He said, he said so you, you must want that a million dollars. Bob says, no, I don't want a million dollars, right? He said, okay, well, you, you must want my land and my estate. He said, no, I don't want your land and your estate. He said, oh, well. Well, doggone it, you must want Ellie Mae's hand in marriage. I don't want to marry Ellie Mae. This is a small town. We know Ellie Mae, right? He said, well, well, what do you want? He said, I want to know the name of the person who pushed me in that pool. <laughs> <laughs> right? And, and everybody laughs, right? And, and everybody, you know, it's a good joke. But what happens when somebody pushes you in the pool, metaphorically speaking? What happens when you get that call in the middle of the night, uh, your sister is just in a terrible accident, or your daughter, right? What happens when your, your spouse, who just one second had all this, his or her cognitive abilities, and it happens like that, y'all. It, it, it's not always a grab. It happens like that, where they just lose it. What happens when that happens, when it, somebody puts you in the pool? You want to make sure you're already set up, all right? So how are we different from other firms? So once again, you got to know the source, right? Sierra, she does legal. Uh, when, when it gets very complicated, and you know, it's, it's rare. Uh, a lot of times when people have own multiple businesses and all of that, it, that's when uh, uh, Andrew comes into play. And then that's when I come into play with the piggy bank, all right? Uh, complimentary consultations, internet-based options puts you in, cr in control of updates, changes, saving you money and home estate plan, the, uh, the last estate plan you ever need. One thing that I, don't, that I didn't like when I got into this industry 
was what I would find is a lot of people. Let me ask, does anybody already have a trust set up? So if you already had a trust set up or even a will, what you will find out is they charge you approximately five to twelve thousand to set up. And then they give you instructions letting you know to fund the will. I mean, fund the trust. Has anybody ever heard that term, fund the trust? Basically, it means retitling all of your property into the trust. All right. And when you're doing a Florida based trust, that means everything has to be done via paperwork. Right. And that means like most human beings, you're not going to send it all in. It takes approximately 30 to 60 days to just get the first stage of funding your trust done. And once again, most attorneys aren't going to do it for you. They're going to ask you to do it by, the, by yourself because they want to avoid that liability. They rather collect the easy check of just setting up the trust and not the liability of teaching you and funding the trust for you. All right. So just know uh, that's another thing to keep in mind and know funding doesn't mean money. Funding means retitling all of your property into the trust. And in Florida, it all has to be done in paper. You have to send it out to the, uh, all of your institutions and all of that and then wait to get a reply. Uh, usually about 30 to 40 percent of the time they send you another document because you have to fill out everything on their document and then send it back. All right. But what happens two to five years later when you buy or sell your car, buy or sell a house, uh, ha uh, one of your your siblings passes away, one of your children's passes away, you get new grandkids. Now, all of a sudden, your trust and your will is obsolete. Right. And now. What are you going to do? Are you going to call this attorney and pay them another twelve hundred dollars just to change one name? Maybe, maybe not. A lot of people don't. A lot of people, when I talk to them, they have they might have a trust and a will set up, but it's probably nine, ten plus years old. It's obsolete. Things have changed since then. Right. And the reason why people set up trusts is avoid probate. So if you haven't funded it with the new things, now all of a sudden you just put your family right back in the same situation. One of the things that you need to, that I recommend that you look up is sh you might want to Google, should I citus, S I T U S, my trust in Nevada? Why should you consider that? The reason why you should consider in citusing your trust in another state like Le Nevada instead of just Florida, instead of Florida, is because Nevada allows you to fund your trust electronically. You avoid that 30 to 60 days. All right. You avoid having to pay uh, an attorney or one of their uh, paralegals uh, more money to do it because you have an online digital platform to where you can make the changes yourself. Right. Or you can still call. But if somebody if all you have to do is make the change electronically, that's when you deal with a company that only charges you a flat rate. OK. OK. Now, has anybody ever heard of a corporate trustee? All right. So one thing to Google, is it a good idea to have co-trustees? Is it a good idea to name uh, your children as trustees? Is it a good idea to name your sisters, your brothers as trustees? If y'all find any article of any repute that says it's a good idea, please send it to me. All right. Reason being is what happened usually when you name somebody and some of you may have already been named as executors of estates and trustees. Right. When you first get named as an executor or a trustee, first you feel honored. Oh, man, they they really they really respect they they respected me. I'm I, like I'm the one that they trusted the most. But round year two to three, I, you, you felt it right round year two to three. That's when you're like, why am I having to deal with all this? And you probably even got isolated from your other siblings, from your other family members, from your other because you're, you're trying to follow the, the intentions of the person who put you in charge. And now all of a sudden you're the bad person. When you elect a corporate trustee, let them be the bad person. The corporate trustee is going to follow that to the T. Now, keep in mind, Crawford Trust Company isn't the only trust company in the United States. Now. They're the trust company. They're one of the ones that I like because not only are they based in Nevada, one of the states that's giving you the best uh, the best rights when it comes to funding your trust and and when it comes to taxes. Right. 
but you know they've been doing this for a long time when you elect for example a brother and sister as co-trustee you're like all right they, they're going to figure this out they're never going to get nothing done when you have two people that have to sign off on making the decision and you're no longer there oh yeah it's going to be animosity right now it's nothing you know if, if you're okay with that cool now some people have it to where uh, and, and, and once again, it all depends on how how you want to do your trust. So uh, a Nevada trust lasts 365 years. So I don't know what all of your uh, income is or if you plan on giving to charity. But if you're somebody that you want to be giving to charity well into the future, uh, centuries into the future, then, yeah, you probably want a corporate trustee. But maybe, and I, and I, I say this lightly, maybe if you just want to trust just for your family to avoid uh, probate and you only have a few assets that you just want the legal mechanism to trigger to where everything goes to the right person in one file swoop maybe then yeah just stick with uh, naming an individual as a trustee but if you have multiple things and you want your trust to still continue to fund things into the future and you want your investments to stay the same into the future to continue to fund things for your grandkids and your grandkids and your and, and their kids then you probably want a corporate trustee all right all right and and, and it's saying why a trust company you know I, I, i've already told you okay so does anybody know that 64 percent of all of the corp the top 500 companies in america are domiciled in Delaware. Did y'all know that? All right. Coca-Cola, their home office is in Atlanta, but their corporate office, Delaware. Boeing, uh, what? I think they're in Seattle. Corporate office, Delaware. Why do you think they do that? Taxes. Taxes, Taxes and benefits. It's called jurisdictional shopping, right? It's a big word, right? Jurisdictional shopping means that not, these big companies are able to choose the state that gives them the best benefits, right? Even with the 529 plans, I, I know some of you probably are funding 529 plans for your grandchildren. Did you know you, it doesn't have to be based in Florida? You can choose the 529 that gives you the best benefit. I think uh, last time I heard it was Utah, right? So that's called jurisdictional shopping. And the reason why I brought that up is sometimes when you tell people that Nevada, states like Nevada, now keep in mind Nevada isn't the only state that gives better treatments to trust than Florida, but they're one of them. Uh, when you tell people about jurisdictional shopping in Nevada, a lot of times they don't they don't get it. But sometimes you got to show them that corporations do this, and it also means that the individual can do make decisions on the best state as well. Okay. All right. So why, why Nevada? All right, and and once again, I think I already told y'all to Google uh, should I should I uh, should I or should I not cite as my trust in Nevada. Uh, there's no exception no exception creditors. What does that mean? When you pass away, and 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 you have your money going to uh, your children, how many of your children probably don't have good good credit right now? Maybe maybe not. Right? Do you want their debtors taking your money? No. Do you want your creditors taking the money? No. When you when you have uh, your trust situs in Nevada, the creditors can't get to it. No exceptions. Okay. Uh, you can keep your money out of the hands of creditors with pre-existing tort claims. In other states, these creditors can reach into without providing uh, and they can reach you as long as there's no fraudulent transfer. Okay. All states let creditors pierce a trust to get at the money if they can prove fraudulent transfer. So you want to make sure that you you funded it correctly and that you're dealing with the right people to make sure that they cannot make it seem like it was funded with a fraudulent transfer, all right? But the key is fraudulent transfer. Yeah. In the state of Florida, it passes as long as there's no fraudulent as long as there's no fraudulent transfer. But but just imagine uh, how, how many people, and once again, it all boils down to a lot of people didn't even send in the paperwork. You see what I'm saying? So it, it, it defeats the purpose. It's like, oh, my mother, my father, they had a trust, right? Didn't never send in the paperwork, okay? 
And, and, and just so you know, I have this article. If you want this article, just email me. But, you know, you're probably going to find it online. But Eight Reasons Nevada is leading trust uh, site. It's like every year what they do is they uh, what they do is they rank the states for the best states the site is your trust in. And for the past five years, Nevada has been on top. Uh, there's one state. Anybody in here a vampire? I guess you wouldn't tell me if you were, right? Now, there's one state that lets the trust go on indefinitely. That's Alaska. So if you were like a uh, Duncan McCloud from the Clan McCloud, right? Uh, anybody get that reference? No? Man, I love that show, man. I love the movie, too, right? But if you want to just continue passing down your money to your grandson that looks uh, uncannily like you, right? All right? Then you would, you know, you, you got an indefinite trust, right? But so... Once again, it's all about, uh, you know, what you like best and what works best for you. So how is a, a good professional able to help you out? All right. So estate planning strategies. Which one would you say is better, a will or a trust? Depends on your financial situation. Depends on the financial situation. I mean, that's, are you an attorney? No. Yeah. All my attorney's friends always say it depends, right? <laughs> That's the answer for everything. It depends, right? I say, and, and, and like you said, it depends on your financial situation. Anybody know the threshold for probate here in Florida? It's approximately 40000 Now, I didn't look, but some of you drove here in $40,000, right? I didn't look, but some of you drove here. For, so you've already met the threshold your financial situation to need in a trust. Because what, what does a will do? A will guarantees probate. If all you have is a will in place, you guarantee probate. Because all it does is tell the judge what to do. And the judge can still say, nah, I'm good. Uh, we'll do so. And, and, and by the way, y'all, just so y'all know, it's, it's more than just liquor back there. You got soda to it, all right? Just so you know, all right? But but when you when all you have is a will in place, you guarantee probate because once again, it's only telling the judge what you want them to do, and they don't even have to do that. All right. Because it's all about the knowledge. Some people think that once they have the will in place, everything is done. Well, that's what we're told. That's what we're told. Here's, here's an example. Mm -hmm. I have a piece of property. Right of survivorship. Okay. Okay. So it transfers without public. So, so it sounds like what you're saying is you have a property where as long as you're living is your property, and as soon as you pass away, got it. Is 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 it just your name on the title of the property? No. no. All right. We're going to talk about that. All right. Uh, so so. I'll do a consult with you, but yeah. Oh yeah, and, and just and just in general. In general, and, and we're going to talk about it, uh, I, I'm going to get a little ahead of myself, but because you brought it up, I want to say it. Anybody agree or disagree that when you put somebody, like your child's name on the title that, uh, of your home, it helps you avoid, it, it avoids probate? I agree, yeah. But what does it invite? Not, not, ju not just taxes. What happens if somebody sues your child? That's a part of their property now. That can be, it can be included. What happens if your child go bank bankrupt? That's a part of it now. What happens if, uh, uh, if she, they get sued, go bankrupt? Th that's, that's what happens. Yes, it does avoid probate, but it also says that if something happens to them financially, that your property can in be included. Divorce included. What happens when you, 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 your, your daughter is getting divorced and her husband has a screwed attorney? All they have to do is skip trace your daughter or son and see that their name is a part of your property. And if they want, oh, yeah, that's included. That's a part of these divorce proceedings. So, yes, it does help you avoid probate, but it invites things that you, I'm probably sure that you didn't want. All right? Financial strategies, uh, growth and protection. All right? Because uh, it's not about how much you make, it's how much you keep. And I think a lot of you already are aware that's how it works. Uh, listen, I think, a lot of, I think all of y'all are doing well because broke people don't show up to estate planning workshops, right? I mean, I'm just looking at the indicators, right? 
right? So you already know the principle is not about how much you make, how much you keep, but some of you are starting to figure out that the government doesn't wait until before you go to the bank to rob you. They wait till after you come from the bank to rob you. Imagine a thief that wanted to rob you and they, 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 they hijack you before you walk into the bank. That's not smart at all. They want to wait until you come out of the bank. When After you've gone through your accumulation years and retired with all of this money, that's when all of a sudden you got the stock market, uh, your 401k dropping 40% every two to three years, right? You got your 403b, your thrift savings plan. You're like, hold up, how, how did all of this happen? It, that's, that's how they rob you, right? Or you, maybe you had a traditional 401k, right? And then so you, you set it up to where you want you need it to maybe pull out seventy thousand dollars a year. But because it's a traditional 401k or a traditional IRA, now you got to pull out more in order to get it because of the taxes. You want to be able to access money without the tax obligation. You want to deal with somebody who can show you how to do that legally, of course. All right. Because when it, once again, you can be mad. You can be mad at people who legally avoid taxes, or you can learn <laughs> how to do it yourself. And and then so you have some people who uh, you know red-blooded Americans, right? I want to do my fair share. I might not love paying taxes, but I get it. Does anybody in here disagree that maybe the government is mishandling your money? Maybe, right? You know, it's subjective, right? But if you had the option of spending money on the charities you like, the people you like, the places you like, instead of just giving in the taxes to let them figure out how to help society, would you not choose the former instead of the latter? I think most people, if given the option, they would prefer to spend their, that money that they would have paid in voluntary taxes toward the charities that they like. You want to deal with people who show you how to do that. Now, and, and you can ask your financial advisor, right? The reason why it, anybody, I'm pretty sure, does y'all have financial advisors, insurance brokers, bankers? Has anybody, any of them ever talked to you about tax mitigation? Nope. Tax mitigation, usually it's only at the very least one, maybe two people in a group of 30 to where their financial advisor talked to them about tax mitigation. Do you know why your financial advisor doesn't talk to you about tax mitigation? It's against the rules. They'll get fired if they talk to you about taxes. They can't. Now, they might talk to you offline. Like, if you got a good friend that's a financial advisor, they may, they may tell you something here and there. But if they officially talk to you about how you mitigate taxes, not, it's, it's against the rules, and they'll get fired. All right? You want somebody who is not against the rules. That's their job. And once again, like I said, if anybody's paying taxes on Social Security, uh, you definitely want to, because it's not the Social Security itself, it's the other money that you have coming in that forces that Social Security into a taxable event, all right? You want to make sure to uh, appropriate your funds in the right vehicles. All right, financial strategies, growth and protection, like I said, all right. Beautiful, smiling families. All right, so what percentage of Americans do y'all believe have a will? 20. 20? About 20? What you said, 40? 40? 20, 40? Let's see. 40%. Oh, you studied before this, right? 40%, right? All right, so how many, how, what percentage of Americans do y'all believe have a trust? Let's see if she says it. 10%. 10? Oh, man. Is she getting 5? 10, 5? Anybody say anything different? 17%. All right. And once again, we already discussed the difference. Cause, so once again, this is one of my favorite sayings. Anybody ever heard this saying? Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. But, and a lot of people feel like when you start talking about wills, when you start talking about trust, that you're going to die. Well, I got some bad news for you. 
you're going to die. Only difference is now you just, you know, you, you, you basically set it up to where now the loving family that you worked hard to build, they probably won't talk to each other for five Christmases, five Christmases at least, right? If they ever talk again. Because let me tell you, a lot of, lot of kids, because I, I see this, you know, I, I, I've had clients for a while now, they don't fight over the money. They fight over the stuff, right? It, like so, something, matter of fact, um, something as simple. Uh, one one of the families, the, the siblings are breaking up because of the TV. Like a one of these, right? And and they said, no, nah, mom wanted me to have that. No, she wanted me to have that. Nah, you you want to you want to go ahead and have it and write. And no, I'd rather my family be mad at me from the grave than mad at each other still alive, right? That's, you know, that's just me. All right. So we getting into this. So, so just so now we, we, we into it. Have y'all learned anything so far? Yeah. All right. That's good. All right. You know, that's that, all I want to do is make sure y'all learn something. All right. But we still learning. Right. So nearly half of all respondents believe that estate planning is only for the ultra rich and most people don't need it. And like I told you, the threshold in Florida is forty thousand dollars. Does that sound ultra rich to you? No. Ultra low. Ultra low, right? And then once again, that three percent cap. So, so some of you probably own homes five hundred, six hundred, eight hundred thousand. For every hundred thousand that your house is worth, they get to charge your family. Uh, the courts and the attorneys get to charge your family three percent of that. And that's only if it's uncontested. All it takes is one person to say is, nah, that's not true. Because guess what? When all you have is a will, and when it goes to probate, what's another requirement? You have to put it in a newspaper, right? That means anybody can contest your will. They put it in a new, all they got to do is call up and say, nah, Bob owed me this. That's, that's contest. And now that 3%, out the window. Now, if you have a trust, that doesn't happen. Yeah, because it's, it's private. If you have a trust, you don't have to publicize it, and everything is already set in stone. 25% haven't spoken about it with their families because they don't like to think about their own death. Because once again, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Man, you don't want that milk and honey? Golly, let's get it. All right, 49% say their assets aren't worth enough to consider an estate plan. We already know that's not true. 61% say a will is enough to meet their estate-related needs, but once again, a will guarantees probate. That's what a will does. If all you have is a will, it guarantees probate. 35% have, ex have experience or know someone who has experienced family conflict as a result not having an estate plan or comprehensive will. I know you experienced it. Anybody else, either firsthand or third party, have seen families get torn apart because of probate. It's terrible. And 46% of Americans say that they're, they're interested in learning more about estate planning. And some of you, uh, any of you, you know, any of your parents still alive, mother, father, right? Just so you know, if you bring this up to your mother and father, they're going to change the subject. But if you agree to pay for it, right, and have them write you a promissory note that you get reimbursed, it's like they don't, it's, it's all of a sudden they don't care. They're like this. And I found it's just the it's just the money. Like if, if if you know if you find out that this is very important and you want your mother and father to partake of it and they keep changing the subject, watch what happens when you say I'll pay for it. Oh, you just stretch. Oh, gotcha. no. Okay, <laughs> right. Watch what happens when you say I'll pay for it. Because once once you because and once again it, it doesn't have to just be no charity. You can pay for them to set up their trust, and now that they have a trust, you can input a promissory note to be reimbursed for what you paid. All right. So why might you and your family need an estate plan? So we're gonna go, go through some um, scenarios, y'all. And just so you know, the scenarios that I'm gonna go through, they may or, not, may or may not seem outlandish, 
But just so you know, I can tell you statistically that just in the state of Florida, all of these scenarios that I'm going to name, it's going to already happen hundreds of times in just just today alone. OK. So scenario number one, a couple is in a car accident. All right. Their adult children come to the hospital but can't get information. Do y'all understand that if both of you, husband and wife, are in a car accident and your children come up to sate your wishes or try to get information, they won't be able to get information? Does anybody know why? What's that? HIPAA. HIPAA. How do you avoid it? We can sign a note at the hospital getting information. That's what we need. Medical power of attorney. When you get your estate plan set up, that's medical power of attorney included. All right. How many of you watch your grand grandchildren? Anybody? What do you think happens if they get hurt and you have to take them to the hospital, but you can't get in touch with your daughter or your son? Grandmother's rights don't exist unless you have. A, so so just imagine this scenario. You're watching your grandchildren and your 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 son and your daughter are off on a, a cruise. You can't get in touch with them. Daughter busts her leg. Or your granddaughter busts her leg. You take her to the hospital. As your grandmother, grandfather, you have no rights. You can't ask what's going on. You can't say what you want to be done. You can't say how you want to be treated. You have no rights at all unless you have the medical power of attorney set up saying that, hey, I'm the grandparent and I have rights to uh, assist my grandchild uh, when it comes to this. When you are dealing with the right estate planning company, they're going to talk to you about that and they're going to get those documents in place. OK, so this is a scenario to where if you want your children to be able to come to the hospital and inquire about you and, and your wishes, you want to get a medical power of attorney set up, giving them those rights. And then vice versa. I recommend you do it vice versa as well. Okay? Can I ask a question? Of course. Do you recommend having one of your children or, or all of your children? I, I recommend a primary and a contingent. I recommend a primary and then contingent, contingent until you run out of contingents. That's my recommendation. I don't recommend co-primaries because that's, once again, you're trying to avoid confusion and conflict. All right. Scenario number two, death of the parents. Right. Father dies. Grandmother dies. And the son dies. All right. So this scenario and once again, we use we use car accidents a lot. Because unfortunately, just a lot of car accidents happen, right? Uh, I know people that are deathly afraid of flying. I mean, deathly afraid, but they drive all day, every day, <laughs> right? I, like, I remember one year I looked up, it was one year, maybe 100 people died in an airplane crash that year, but over a million died in car accidents, right? But those, but once again, they'll get in the car every day go hundreds of miles right but when it comes to that plane they ain't touching it right but in this scenario mother father and son was in a car what happens if does anybody have um for example for like a, a you have a beneficiary set up for your uh your 401k right you might have your son or your daughter set up as a beneficiary right what happens if whoever you had set up as a beneficiary died along with you. What happens? It goes to who the contingent is. Did you set a contingent? Right? Some people didn't even set a contingent. Right? But, but all right. So, however, maybe it goes to the contingent and maybe, you know, it has to go through the little probate process. But who did you just unintentionally cut out of your, out of your benefits? Your grandchildren. Right? If you, anybody ever heard of an a, a, a IRA beneficiary trust? Write that down. It's, it's the same as, uh, and you can use this for the 403B. You can use this for the 401K. You can use this for the thrift savings plan. Basically, you have it set up to where the beneficiary of your qualified retirement account is your trust, right? 
And if the beneficiary of the qualified retirement account is the trust, then you can set all of the rules to what happens if this, that, and the third happens. Another benefit is whenever you name somebody as the direct beneficiary and not giving them the benefit through a trust, they cannot stop the transfer of the money. And some people might think, well, why would I, why would I care? Why do I care if they're able to stop the transfer of the money or not? What happens when the money is coming to them? Once again, we're going to name these three things and they're going through a divorce, a lawsuit, a bankruptcy. If the money is being transferred to them while they're going through a divorce, a lawsuit or bankruptcy and they can't stop it. Now, all of a sudden that just became a party to the divorce. It just became a party to the, uh, the, the bankruptcy. It just became a party to the lawsuit. When the money goes to a trust, you can set it up to where the money uh, comes to them periodically. You can set it to where it goes out to them in a lump sum, right? And guess what? If they're going through something at that time, they can just say, hey, keep it in the trust while I wait for this divorce to finalize. Okay, question. In the state of Florida, mm -hmm. inheritance isn't considered marital asset, though, is it? Uh, inheritance? W what, what type of inheritance? See, it, see, you talking about an inheritance of like a uh, like a like a lawsuit. Like a, no, I mean, I'm sorry, like a life life benefit. Okay, life, mm -hmm. property, all of that is not considered marital assets in the divorce. Show it to me. Show show am me I, that. Am I wrong? No, no. Nah, nah, I, I don't. I, I think you're wrong. I think that a 401k that if the money comes to them as the benefit that it would be included. But you could be right. But does it stop out lawsuits? Does it stop out bankruptcy, right? Yeah, it doesn't stop that, but mm -hmm. it can't be just, that's the way I was. Oh, yeah. Accepted. Oh, yeah. And once again, and divorce is just one thing, right? But you, know, you, you may be right or you may not. But the way I see it, I'll, I'll well, that's always. That's important, important the distinction. I mean, I mean, I mean it, it is important, but all right. So it, so y'all, y'all Google can't is a is a is a 401k <laughs> included in divorce, right? Uh, and and, and that's, that's a good that's a good uh, statement. It may or may not be, but I know uh, if if I'm dealing with three possibilities, and only one is is, is excluded. The other the other the other one is, is real estate. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And real estate that's that's inherited and instructed is not part of the real estate. Not well. Look it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm saying. Now, see, all right. So, oh, so now, now, all right. So, th th this brings up a good point. Don't believe everything y'all hear from an attorney. I'm just gonna be straight up with y'all. Like, w whenever an attorney tells me something, I'll be like, "Ah, oh, I never knew that. Can you please send me the? You know what I mean?" And usually, what 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 Napoleon Hill say? Anybody ever heard of Napoleon Hill? Uh, Think and grow rich. He says, whenever you want to uh, uh, ask them, how do they know, right? How do they know? When, when I talk about this stuff, I'm always thinking about divorce, lawsuit, and bankruptcy. But, yeah, sometimes divorce, some, some assets that are inherited are excluded from divorce. But that's just one threat, right? One threat. Right, to being substantial. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's huge. I mean, div listen, and, and, div divorce, and, and divorce don't just hurt the man no more. It, it hurts women too, right? And you had. I was just going to. My, my um, attorney that handled our will and stuff like that, he was going to set on our 401k. I had a son going through bankruptcy, and they said, don't put them on it. So we dropped it down to the grandchildren level of his portion because it, then we can revert it back after the fact. But while they were going through a bankruptcy, not too much. Uh, Okay, got it. So it sounds like that attorney advised you that it could be a party to the divorce. Correct. All right. Divorce, did that attorney discuss with you about the benefits of trust or they just did the wills for you? Yes, is it an attorney that, all right, this is exactly what you want, so I'm going to do exactly what you want. No, I'm not going to provide you any additional. Are you like, did you go, hey, this is exactly what I want. I don't want nothing else. I don't know. It's so old now that um, it's got to be re looked at anyway. Understood. Absolutely. Yeah, because some attorneys, man, and, and not just attorneys, accountants, like, I want a proactive accountant. <laughs> like, like, you know, I, I want an accountant that's saying, hey, did you know this? Hey, did you know that? Now, I don't want you to just, just fill in the blank. I want you to, 
be proactive trying to save me some money. So, yeah, it sounds like that attorney gave you some good advice, but maybe they should have also mentioned those, those trusts as well. Yeah, you say, I don't need it. That's like, that's like going to the insurance person and say, hey, give me the cheapest homeowner's insurance you can get me. All right. <laughs> Financial advisor says, I put money, my money in that one. Yeah, <laughs> it's my money and I need it now. All right. So uh, would any of that be a concern to y'all, right? Now, here's uh, the joint tenancy. Uh, I think uh, that's what you were referring to, right? And once again, I've, I've already told y'all the disadvantage of that. Well, you, al you already know the advantage. Yes, you do avoid probate when you put uh, your beneficiaries' names on the title. But once again, you invite their headaches as well. You invite, st you invite their potential lawsuits. You invite their potential bankruptcies. You invite their potential divorces. All right. Beneficiary child also passes away. And that's what we discussed. Uh, when, when that happens, you just unintentionally disinherit your grandchildren. Yeah, sometimes I'll be, I'll be hitting the wrong direction. All right. And we and we and we also so it's not just the house; it's the bank accounts as well. Anybody already have their children or their beneficiary listed on their accounts? Same situation, right? Yes, they got access to it. Yes, you avoid probate, but <laughs> it, your, now your account is a part of the divorce, the bankruptcy, and the lawsuit. Now, I, I have seen a lot of situations to where the spouse, the divorcing spouse, you know, they say, hey, that's, that, that's not my money. That's not my house. Don't include it. The attorney, their attorney, like, you sure? Nah, I'm good. But what happens when you have somebody that's upset, somebody that's spiteful, all right? Somebody that never liked you anyway, <laughs> right? And what, what could happen is if the house is paid off, so if you have an asset that has equity in it, and now all of a sudden it was included in your child's divorce or bankruptcy or lawsuit. How do you get the money out to give them their portion? You either have to sell your house now or refinance it. You just went from a paid off house to either having to sell it to get the money out or refinancing it. But if it was like a sitcom, like a comedy movie, then they would have to move in, right? <laughs> all right all right we talked about it we talked about it all right so we talked and we also talked about this the ira and does anybody know the difference between ira and 401k so a 401k is what you get when you're working for a company an IRA is something that you set up for yourself. Uh, I believe the maximum that you can put in an IRA this year is approximately 6000 But if you're over the age of, uh, it's either 50 or 55, you can put in 7000 a year. And for a 401, 401k, it's, it's think, I think it's approximately 22, 22 to 25000 I believe, right? So the only difference between an IRA and a 401k is, uh, you know, one you set up individually and one you set up uh, with your company, right? Which one is better, a Roth or a traditional IRA? A Roth. It depends. It does depend. See, y'all good. All these attorneys in the room, right? But for the most, typically, it's rare that a traditional I uh, IRA or 401k is better than a Roth. Typically. The reason being is, like I said, all truths are parallel. If I want to go up to a farmer today and ask them, would they rather pay taxes on the seed or on the crop? What, what do you think they'll say? Seed. The seed, because it's a smaller amount, right? Or the crop, which is now huge, right? Here's what people who say defer, defer, defer. They're essentially saying that either A, 
taxes are going to be lower in the future, or B, you're not going to have any substantial income anymore in the future. All right? Now, y'all tell me if this is true or not true. You might be paying lower in taxes now that you're not working, but you're probably still paying approximately the same percent, if not higher. Is that true or not true? Yeah, because you, you're paying the same percent, if not higher. So when people tell you defer, 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 because you're going to be paying less taxes in the future, they're telling you that either. And once again, what do we know about taxes? Are taxes going to go up or go down? <laughs> I remember. Uh, so I, my mother, she had it set up to where me and my sister, we couldn't leave the house until we bought our first house. Like we couldn't leave. Right. And, and so when we actually left the house, I left the house when I was 22, when I bought my first home. Right. Uh, I had no idea what it was like to rent. And then I moved to Atlanta for four years. So I was renting. Right. So. So, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a culture shock. Right. Because so this is what happens. I, I walk into the uh, the apartment complex and, you know, he we do the whole song and dance. He shows me the place. I like the place. We're sitting down. And we're signing all the paperwork, and, and he he casually says, and, and and by the way, sometimes due to the market conditions, the price of the rent might go up. And I said, I said what? He said, sometimes due to the market conditions, the price of the rent might go up. And I said, okay, interesting. So does sometimes. Do the market conditions, the price go down? He said, oh, no, it never goes down. <laughs> Taxes, they don't go down. O over, the t over the time, they always are going up and up and up. So when you, and so the reason why I say, and, and you're right, it does depend, but it's very rare that a traditional IRA or 401k will outbeat a Roth. Because once again, I'd rather pay taxes on certain taxes today than uncertain taxes tomorrow. All right? Scenario number four. So this is a parent that has a, a large IRA and she passes away. All right. The child receives a lump sum. Lump sum is 200 grand. Taxed. Do you realize whenever they get that lump sum, they get taxed? Right? You actually don't have to take it in a lump sum. You can take it over 10 years. You could. But how, if given the option... Do you think your child is going to take it in a lump sum or spread it out over 10 years? It depends on how smart they are. <laughs> Most of them ain't smart, right? And, cause, uh, and, and not even smart. Common sense ain't common, right? Most people, when given the option, they're going to take the lump sum. And guess what? In 18 months, statistically, 18 months is going to be all gone. Not reinvested. All gone, right? So as you said, they can take it over but when usually when given the option most people take the lump sum but if you have it set to go into your IRA beneficiary trust you can set the rules now you know they call it the dead hand y'all ever heard of that <laughs> when you have a when you have a properly uh, structured and funded trust you rule everything with a dead hand, right? You, you, you still can say how you want it to move and, and what you want to happen. And, and, and not, you know, because once again, it's not that they're dumb. They just don't have the common sense. There's some people that's very book smart, no common sense. And they withdraw as needed? Yes. So the way, the way and once again, it can be, set, it can be your rules. You, you can set it up to where if certain things happen, then they can, they can get it. You or or you can have it set to where it's going, you know, going, you know, uh, you know periodic. As needed, and then you can set the thresholds for what is considered needed, right? Now, if you set up your trust correctly, just imagine having a trust set up, having the investments that got you here set up having a corporate trustee keeping those investments going, then that those investments can offset the taxes. You know, it could. All right. Scenario number four. 
if married, what if her spouse later files a divorce? And we already discussed this. Oh, look at him, such a happy family. Now he gets his cut, divided by two. All right. And we already talked about the IRA beneficiary trust. If, if, if you never knew that this existed, this is something that whoever you go with, you want to make sure that along with your trust, you also have the IRA beneficiary trust built in, okay? It enables you to do three things. Manage the distribution after you're gone, the dead hand, right? Protect your children against lawsuits because once again, if something has happened, they don't have to take the money. They can leave it in there until the proceeds are taken care of. Protect your children against divorce. Same situation. All right, so there's, uh, so scenario number five, conservatorship. All right, so what happens, so do y'all, and I, I don't know if any of y'all have dealt with this, but what happens when or if or when your spouse loses capacity, you don't automatically get the right to make decisions for your spouse. You have to go through the courts. Or if you already have a medical and financial power of attorney set up, you don't need to. So not only do we help you set up the medical power of attorney, we also help you set up the financial power of attorney. Uh, any of you are getting uh, a, a big, uh, a part of, or maybe a significant part of your money is coming from the 401k, right? What happens when your spouse loses capacity and you call, let's say your husband loses his capacity, he can no longer make decisions for himself, and you call the 401k people to talk about the 401k. What do you think they're going to say? Oh, 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 give, send us his death, send us the death certificate and we, we can get with you. I didn't say he died. I said he lost capacity. I'm, I'm listed as the beneficiary. Oh, yeah, you, you're the beneficiary if he dies. But because he lost capacity, we, we still can't talk to you. But once again, if you have your medical power of attorney and financial power of attorney set up in advance, you can get it all squared away. All right. Medical and financial. Because th th those are two separate documents, y'all. All right. So Stacy Pearson, this is uh, one of the people that's on the team with me. Right. So just so you know what Stacy Pearson does, she had years as a legislative assistant and advocate lo lobbying at every level of government for those who can't speak for themselves, including speaking at the United Nations, uh, discover uh, discovered family falling through the cracks, created a product that covers all dependents. Does anybody have a special needs child or grandchild? You ever heard of a special needs trust? Yeah? No, I don't have them, But, but you heard of it. <laughs> you maybe want to get this set up. Because now you can you can have money set up and delegated on what you want for that special needs child or grandchild. Some money that nobody can't mess with, right? Because what typically happens is you set up you know, you send it to the guardian. That guardian can do whatever they want. Go but if you have a trust set up that includes the special needs trust and is, is managed by a corporate trustee, oh no, nah, they gotta follow the rules. Right? That's how it works. Does that do anything with taxes? Yeah, it, it can, cause uh, what it does is if you got money growing in the right vehicle inside the trust, then the money can be growing tax free. So it doesn't automatically save you on taxes. You, the money has to be put in the right tax free vehicles. And, and, and just so y'all know, uh, uh, free advice. Uh, it's IRS codes. Uh, ah, man, I don't. I don't want to be misquoted on this. Uh, 7702, 72A, and 101A. It basically says that as long as there's money growing inside of a life insurance policy, it's tax free. And as long as you borrow the money and not withdraw the money from the life insurance policy, it's tax free. So what somebody might do 
is set up a life policy inside of the trust to where the money is growing tax free to where they can pull money out of there. When they pass, they don't pay back. Exactly. And then the, the, it, it comes like it, it, it's, it's so many benefits to doing it that way. And guess what? And, and, and they, they've tried. They, they bring it up in special sessions. Uh, I think they just did it uh, last year and they ended up making it more robust. The reason being is a lot of the powerful people in this country, majority of their families, majority of their money is in life insurance policies. And guess what? When all of the banks was going through all of that stuff, guess what they asked them? Where is most of your money? Majority of the money, billions of dollars, more than what they have in assets is in what? Life insurance. If your spouse is in a coma, and, 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 and let me tell you something, I just get real excited about this. Let's say, uh, and just so you know, you can, if you, if you structure a permanent life policy the right way, you can get a life policy on up until the age of 79, 80 years old, right? Just so you know that. But let's say for whatever reason that you don't have good health and you don't qualify for a life policy in order to get these tax benefits. Have any of you ever heard of a surrogate? You probably heard of the baby surrogate. But did you know that it's the policy owner that gets all of these benefits, right? So if you're the policy owner and you put a policy on your child or on your grandchild, you still get to get all of the benefits of the tax-free growth the tax-free use of it, and you use their good health to qualify. You use them as a surrogate. That's a great way to pass on Yeah, because what you can do is, while you're alive and you're the policy owner, you, you can be pulling the money and using it for yourself tax-free, and then you can set it up to where it passes, either it passes to the ownership of the trust when you die, and have, and, and have it the money still continue to grow, or you can have it passed that now passed to them, and now they are the policy owner. Now they get the benefits, right? And you know, and this is the same uh, scenario number seven. If if your spouse is incapacitated in, in a coma, all of that good stuff. Once again, if you have if you have your medical and financial power of attorney set up in advance before this happens, this is when you avoid it. And, and, to your, and like we discussed earlier, I, I, think, I think you asked the question, you wanna set it up not, I can't remember who asked, but you wanna set it up not uh, primary, primary, but one primary, one contingent, right? So for example, let's say one of your children is in the medical field, maybe they might be the primary, and then the other children are contingent. Maybe one of your children is in the financial field, maybe a little bit more responsible with money, they would be the primary of the financial power of attorney and then contingent, contingent, contingent. All right, scenario number eight. What rights do you have to get information or take or make decisions for your adult children without proper documents? And once again, if you don't have the medical and financial power of attorney set up, because uh, once again, of course, you're gonna automatically think, I need to set this up to where uh, they have a medical financial power of attorney for me. But just remember, it's nothing wrong with you doing it in reverse as well, vice versa, all right? But, and if something happens to you, I wanna be able to go into this hospital and, make, and call some shots, right? All right, so proper estate planning can address all of these scenarios. Any, any, were any of those scenarios a concern for y'all? Yes, no, maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are the most common questions? What's better, a will or a trust? What is it? Trust. Uh, trust. And why is it? The dead hand, right? But a will guarantees probate, and the, uh, the trust, a properly sh structured and funded trust avoids probate. And it keeps your business out of the newspaper, right? Probate court. And, and y'all know what probate court is basically them deciding, people that have never met you before, deciding what to do with your stuff. Yes, it can be avoided. All right. So probate court is the granting of probate is the first step 
in the legal process of administering a deceased person's estate. It resolves all claims while distributing all the deceased person's property under a will. Okay? Why does probate court exist? Now, probate court does serve a function. Like, I remember before I got into this industry, I thought probate was required. I thought that was just what happens, right? It's just because most people I knew wasn't set up correctly, right? But it does have a function. Uh, what if, uh, let's say, what if somebody hired a landscaper, right, to, to landscape their, their yard, right? And the, the, the landscaper gives them a quote, say, hey, it's going to be $10,000 to do this entire landscaping. So the woman goes ahead and pays half, and she says, I'll pay you the other half when I get back from out of town. What happens when this landscaper sends her one email, sends her two emails, calls, 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 nobody answers, and finally a month later, two months later, he knocks on the door and finds out that she died when she went out of town, right? That's the only way that that landscaper is going to get the rest of their money is by going through probate. So it does have a function, but it isn't required, okay? So the problems with probate, the fees, we already discussed the fees. Uh, in Florida and in a lot of other states, they're able to charge a cap of up to 3%, the, the courts and the attorneys, as long as everything goes uncontested. Once the stains start to become contested, that's when that cap goes away. All right. So here are probate fees in Florida. I think this is wrong. I'm sorry. This is an old slide. That's incorrect. Actually, that is correct. So somebody got on me because this says 40,000 or less. All right, so this is the threshold, right? But you know, you know what I you know what I'm saying, right? All right. But yeah, so here it is. Once you start getting to this, it's $3,000 plus 3%, right? And then once again, but that cap is only exists as long as there's no con contestion of the will. Where do you uh, where do, does your probate dollars go? All right? This is where it goes. All of these bills, all of these fees, all of these obligations, all of these words, all of these dead trees. Where would you prefer it went? To them, right? Delays. All right, so this is what typically happens when a family is going through probate. If you have multiple children, and let's say the, uh, the utilities still need to be paid, or maybe there's still a mortgage, or maybe there's still other things, who do you think is going to be paying that stuff? Your most successful child, right? Is your most successful child going to get their money back? Nope. And that's where the animosity starts. A as the months and months go for the probate to get taken care of, they're the ones that's taking care of everything, and then usually that's where that animosity starts coming in. I'm paying all of these bills and I still get, you know, I don't get my money back and I also get, you know, just treated as if I wasn't the one taking care of mom and dad, right? Who will pay? And like I said, because they free, they, they and, and once again, it's a minimum of six months it can be frozen, right? The house payment, the monthly bills, the real estate taxes, public record, your probate must be listed in a newspaper three times. That's three weeks of your personal business in the newspaper. And if y'all ever, you know, and I, I think y'all already know this, uh, you can look up your, any, if y'all know any family members or friends that have recently passed, you can look up everything. Because I'm almost positive they had to go through probate, right? A will equals probate. So what happens is you put all of this in the will. You got 10% liquidation costs, attorney's fees, executive's fees, and accounting fees, okay? You got 30% taxes federal estate taxes, state taxes, and income taxes, right? 
So out of that, only 60% goes to your family. Now, when you're dealing with somebody that knows what they're doing, we can't always eliminate 100% of the taxes. Uh, sometimes, depending on the situation, get it down to maybe 10%, right? But I'd rather my family get 90% instead of 60%. And like, I, like we said, all of these people, Elvis Presley, $10 million estate, $7.3 million to probate, and, uh, and, and others, uh, other costs, all right? Out of his $10 million estate, 7.3 went to everybody else except the people he, that he probably wanted it to go to. Howard Hughes, $2.5 billion estate, 100 plus people filed claims. Seven years to settle, pro beats, pro, uh, pro, proceeds went to 22 cousins. He probably never even talked to those people, right? But they were, they were their uh, uh, last, uh, you know, closest surviving relatives. And, and, and now that I mention that, is anybody here in a blended family? Do you, and you know what a blended family is? It means, you know, you got children from one, one marriage, children from one marriage. Have you ever heard the phrase, the last to die wins? You ever heard that? So what happens is when you're in a blended family, and you die without a will or a trust, it goes to your closest surviving relative. Who's your closest surviving relative? Your spouse, right? So what happens when you die and it goes to your spouse? Now it's up to your spouse, good will and charity to give it to any of your children because your children have just been completely cut out, right? Completely. So what happens when your, now your spouse passes away and they don't remarry? It goes to their closest surviving relatives. Who are their closest surviving relatives if they don't remarry? Their children. Now their children just got everything and your children got nothing. What if your spouse remarries and then they pass away? Now somebody you don't even know <laughs> just got all of your money. Right. So that's what. So when you're in a blended family and it's like that, just just so you know, there's a phrase called the last to die wins. Right. <laughs> right. And, you know, it, it, sometimes you got to, you know, they, uh, when I was learning, when I when I was getting my uh, charter financial consultant designation, uh, my instructors, you know, they call it fun with divorce because we are every every course we had to talk about. We had to talk about divorce and it's a, it's a depressing subject. So, so, you know, we just had to make humor of it, right? Michael Jackson, $1 billion estate, three kids, two ex, were those his kids? I don't know, three kids, two ex-wives, mother went to probate court, uh, seven years to settle, y'all. Honest Abe, no will, no estate plan. He was an attorney too, and he wrote great letters. Ah oh, man, they just—they need to do a movie just on the letters that Abraham Lincoln wrote. I mean, he wrote some good letters. Did y'all ever hear that 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 letter he wrote to his brother-in-law? Yeah, look at uh, whenever you get the chance, check it out. Uh, Abraham's Lincoln a letter to his brother-in-law. <laughs> All right, Martin Luther King, no will, no trust. Kids have been fighting for over forty-five years. Still hasn't been settled. Because, you know, you got reach, speech rights, all of that stuff, right? This just happened relatively recently, right? Because Prince died without a will or an estate plan, his money was frozen. George Lopez had to give his family money to pay for his funeral. Because once again, when you don't have it set up right, everything gets delayed. And it typically takes about three to six months. Three months if you're lucky. Six months, that's, that's, you know, or, and, it can, and as you see, it can go even longer. All right, so like I was telling you, uh, whoever you go with, now, you know, me and the people that I work with, we do this, but whoever you go with, you definitely want to be with a, a company that shows you how you can get your VHSs, your pictures, your DVDs saved into uh, a digital uh, form to where your family can have access to it forever. If a storm comes along, if a fire comes along, 
if uh if they start cuz I don't know do y'all deal with this uh anybody here have photo albums? Yes. So are you at the point now to where your family is coming and taking pictures? You you spend all this time putting together this beautiful album and now you missing pictures, right? It, you, is that but you know and once again they're taking them because they want to remember right but at the same time those was my pictures right so you know you want to make sure to put them up in the right in a good place so uh, not only can you save all of this stuff but you can also leave the stories right uh we we have it to where documents some people you don't realize the stories until you get asked the right question we ask you the right questions in order to stimulate you to tell these stories and, and, and believe me you don't you may not think so but Whenever you're gone, your family going to read this stuff and they're going to learn some stuff about you that they never knew, right? Like why you cut the the end off the turkey before you put it in the pot. <laughs> see. All right. Let's see. And we getting to it, y'all. I hope y'all learn stuff. And we're getting down to the last slides. So this is how it should be set up, y'all. You got your grantor settler. You're the person that's creating the trust. You put all of this stuff inside of the trust, right? And then your family can easily access the, the, and reap the benefits of it without it being made public, without paying all of these fees, and and you can avoid some unnecessary voluntary taxes. All right. Who, who doesn't love the IRS? <laughs> right. You you want to once again. If you love paying taxes, great. But but all of you at least most of you admitted that maybe the government isn't manager, managing your money the best way right and if you had the option you would if you could keep the money that you would have otherwise given away for free to the IRS you would probably spend it on your own taxes you probably take your family on some beautiful vacations right make some memories before you get out of here and an IRA is an IOU Traditional IRAs, traditional 401ks, uh, all I can say is there's nothing wrong if you have a traditional IRA or traditional 401k. They say the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. Y'all ever heard that? Do you know what the second best time is? Today. You can avoid, maybe you have a traditional IRA or traditional 401k paying unnecessary taxes. You can strategically roll out of that to a tax favorite vehicle. Yeah, you probably would have been better off if you did this 20 years ago, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't take advantage of the knowledge that you have today, okay? How will you be remembered? And we talked about the Florida fees. If you have already have a trust, if you already have a trust, you are 100% sure your trust is, are you 100% sure that your prop, trust is properly and fully funded? Because once again, funding doesn't mean money when it comes to trust. It means all of your other assets are titled in the trust. One of the reasons why you probably want to look at Nevada is because you can get things funded electronically. Instead of it taking 30 to 60 days, it takes approximately 30 minutes, okay? Two, is your healthcare power of attorney uh, HIPAA compliant? Are your medical records uh, accessible by your power of attorney? You wanna make sure that these power of attorneys are legal binding documents and to where people can access it and you can get it done, okay? Does your current trust have an IRA beneficiary trust? Remember, IRA beneficiary trust allows you to send the money to the trust, and that way it doesn't force it into the hands of your beneficiary because most people are just going to take it in a lump sum, and most people, 88, in, in just 18 months, all of the money is going to be gone. Not reinvest it. Gone. Are you sure 
who uh, are you sure who are your successor trustees, successor executives, healthcare and financial power attorneys? Have y'all even talked to the people? Some of you probably already have executives. Have y'all talked to them about it? Maybe, maybe not. Do you have a pour over will? So what happens? Because when you're dealing with the right people, they're going to have it set up. Like when, So with my clients, automatically I'm accessible. But we're going to talk every year. What happens if somebody, a, a grandchild is born or, you, you are, I'm sorry, you get a new asset prior to us having the time to get this thing funded? You want to make sure that you have a pour over will provision inside of your will and inside of your trust to where those things that you didn't get into the trust or the will, you want to have a mechanism set up in place to where it pours over upon a, a triggering event, which is your death. Okay. Six, have you had any major family changes? So since I know some of you already have wills and trusts, maybe, but since you've initially set up your will and your trust, have there been any divorces, any marriages, any births, any disability of family members, any inheritance, any major purchases of property or other assets? If that's happened since you set up your will or your trust, now your will and trust is obsolete. And you have to get it redone. Now you have to decide, am I going to pay this attorney another $1,200 just to change one name, just to change one address? Or if I have it set up with the right people to where they're utilizing uh, uh, Nevada laws to where I've already paid my fee, I can just call Randolph, I can just log online and make the change myself at no additional cost. Maybe you might prefer to do that. Had you made any arrangements to how you would like to be treated or not treated if you were incapacitated? Once again, a lot of people don't like to think about that. We, we, we make you think about it. All right. So, y'all, I want to thank you so much. So, so here, here you go. Uh, with Shield Wolf Strongholds, uh, you get a, 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 a prompt approach, legal, tax, and financial. Uh, you get a personally help. Uh, I personally help you assign your assets to your trust and you get free annual reviews. Who has any pets? We help you set up the pet trust too. We, 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 now we get, what's, what's, what's some of the best uh, dog food? We keep the pedigree on the, on the roll, man. We, we make sure they have the money for the pedigree. They can only buy pedigree, right? We, we got it set up where they got to show the receipts for pedigree, right? You can put that in your trust. if You, you can literally put only pedigree if you want to set up your pet trust uh nevada trust laws uh the reason why and just so you know um if you do decide to uh come with me and just so you know uh in the back miss miss marie uh if you give her your, your green sheet uh if you decide to let me set up your trust not only do we do a flat rate and we don't charge you any more to make changes but we'll give you a 20 percent discount right if you <laughs> But you gotta you gotta circle your preferred day and time on there. If you circle your preferred day and time on that sheet, then we'll I, I give you a twenty percent discount, and it's a flat rate. Whenever you call me, you can make changes at no additional cost. And just so y'all know, I'm just gonna be real with y'all. The reason why we set up trust for it's a very low rate, it's a flat rate, and you don't have to make changes again, cause we hope, we hope that maybe you let us talk to you about how to structure your money. You don't have to, but we do this at a, at a flat rate just so maybe, maybe you let us talk to you about how to structure your money to avoid taxes. Does mm -hmm. you have to go, is that flat rate the same for everybody? You don't have to go to Jacksonville, huh? Is the flat rate the same for everybody or is it based on what you're... The flat rate is the same for everybody, uh, but everybody doesn't get advantage of the discount. And, and you get the discount if you attended a, one of these workshops or if you took one of my online uh, stress test assessments. So yes, it's a flat rate. Do you have to go to Jacksonville? No. However, if you're not located in Jacksonville, majority of our conversations would be via Zoom and telephone. All right. So if you're okay with that, cool. All right. If not, you know, I understand. All right. And, uh, and it's flat fee, no surprises. All right, y'all. So let's just review what we talked about before I let you go. We went through the eight everyday situations that you uh, that could become tragic. Uh, we uh, we explained how to properly prepare for them. 
We covered pitfalls of not planning for your family. We showed you how to write the ultimate love note to your family, and we shared three huge benefits of an IRA beneficiary trust. I want to thank all of y'all for being here. You got a question? Yeah, on the brochure you sent out, you said, and I stepped out. You uh -huh. already talked about this, but um, protect your home from being swallowed up by nursing home care. Right, by nursing home care. All right, so when you have your, all right, so what what typically happens is, what happens when your medical, your medical, like um, what, your Medicare and your Medicaid runs out? You have to appear destitute in order to get more money. Or you have to appear like you're about to die. So I, I know some nurses and what they do for people who run out of Medicare and Medicaid, they make it seem like they're about to die in 12 months, right? And then that's when you go to hospice. And so now you get, you get the, you know, you get the, those benefits and it's a miracle you survived, right? <laughs> right? So, so, so yeah, so in order to, to, help, to keep it from being swallowed up, we can reallocate the property to a trust. Now it's not considered, it could potentially not be considered in your name and things like that. So that can, that's, that's one way we can help avoid it, uh, being swallowed up by the health care and stuff like that. Does that. Did that answer your question? Is it not really? Hmm? But isn't it like within five years, if you do something within five years, they can... The look back period. That's, that's why we got attorneys. Yeah. So, so we got attorneys to where we can, we can have conversations. But you're talking about that five-year look back? Yeah, because right. they are looking back. Yeah, so we want to do it as soon as possible. Right. But, but we have attorneys that can have those conversations with you. Yeah. Uh, my wife passed a couple of days ago. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm so sorry. sorry. It's, it's I'm so sorry. I love my life. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you from experience, and I want to clarify, um, your Medicare and Medicaid, you're on whatever the Blue Cross or Blue Shield plan or whatever you've got mm -hmm. up until the day you die, and you're paid deductibles on both mm. the hospital stays and your medical bills, unless, she's, unless she takes hospice at home. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because it's only the last four or five days that the government covers everything. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if you get sick and you end up in the hospital, even if it's a hospice hospital, your deductibles kick in. Mm. And they kick in until the last four or five days before you pass. Wow, man. And my wife was... My wife was terminal for two years and I took care of her 24-7 and she died at home, so... No, not even respite care? No, I... Took care of her. You did it. She died. She died. A good Friday at eleven. Mm. Mm. And, and 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 that's that's symbolic. But most people don't understand how your insurance works. Right. Yeah. You know? And they think hospice is just going to come in and you're not going to have to be responsible for everything. And I'm here to tell you that's not the truth. Mm. Okay. Mm. And that's symbolic, man, for her passing on Good Friday. I tell you another thing about insurance. Is you need a good insurance agent. I know one who who helped us and skilled us in it because we got a policy with Halifax Health, which is the best. And um, I mean, this hospice was the best. We went with hospice care, but we got we got a health policy with Humana. And we have deductibles, but they're yearly deductibles. So where you run into bills of $100,000 is you get sick in October, you got a $4,000 deductible on your medical and a $4,000 on your nursing home, and then January it starts all over again. Yeah. So you can be ill for six months and have all of a sudden $16,000 worth of bills. And, and, and this is what typically happens, y'all. What typically happens is it, your, your, your situation is unique. Usually, typically the husband passes before the wife, but the husband doesn't pass suddenly. So even if you have a $500,000, $750, million dollar nest egg, that, those fees start adding up. A hundred, hundred fifty, hundred, a hundred and fifty on the low end a year you're paying in medical bills, right? And, and medications. And so if it takes your spouse anywhere from two to five years to pass away, now that nest egg is being depleted, and I truly believe you have a lot of people that pass away after the first spouse die. I don't think they, they always die from a broken heart. I think they die because they can't afford to keep living. Three years before that, I had a couple quick stories, and now I'll leave. Mm -hmm. 
three years before that, I was having heart problems. I went in, they didn't know what was wrong with it. They went in and did a scope on me, and I had what they call the widow maker. Mm, in your heart, uh, yeah. 80%, you're dead. It happened, on the, it happened to me on the hospital room. Mm -hmm. Right? They saved my life. I was here. My mother, my wife was there all the time. A year before she got her diagnosis of cancer, I had kidney disease. Mm. I went in and they did robotic surgery and fixed my kidney disease. And I'm telling you, my bill was $300,000 for the kidney disease. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I had the deductibles and good insurance. Mm -hmm. Or they would have taken the house and everything else. Gotcha. And, and just so y'all know, I, I teach that stuff. So that's stuff we can talk about. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention, I was an agent for State Farm for seven and a half years. So even when it comes to your homeowners, I know a lot of y'all are dealing with homeowners insurance stuff. If y'all got questions about that, feel free to ask me. Uh, I'm, I'm a chartered property casualty underwriter. That's the highest uh, professional designation you can get when it comes to property and casualty insurance. I can help you out with those questions. A lot of you probably dealing with that. A lot of you probably even got damage to your homes. And, you, and if you've been denied within the past two to three years let, uh, for a claim that you filed that you thought was correct, let me know and I can possibly give you some good advice, all right? So I, I wanna thank y'all so much, so much for coming out. Uh, y'all braved the rain and y'all spent a good time with me. How, what was it, about an hour and a half we did? Thank you so much. Uh, so, and I hopefully, like I said, if, if you circle a day and time, that's your preference, and hand it to Miss Marie in the back, uh, you can get a discount if you decide to have a conversation with me more about setting up a trust, a will, or dealing with the money. Thank you so much. I hope y'all learned something. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, round of five. I appreciate it. Ooh.